Hey guys, it's your pal Dave from notesandvolts.com and in my hand I am holding an Arduino Nano, one of the cheapest Arduinos you can get. A few years ago I made a series of videos called MIDI for the Arduino that showed you how to hook up buttons and potentiometers to an Arduino Nano or Uno and make your own custom MIDI controller. One of the questions I got asked a lot was how many controls can I hook up to this little guy? And I didn't really have a good answer. So in this video, I am going to attempt to hook up 64 potentiometers to one little Arduino Nano. Now, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I think we'll either succeed or we will rip a hole in the fabric of space and time and the universe as we know it will come to an end. Either way, it's going to be exciting, so stay tuned. All right, so 64 potentiometers, one Arduino Nano. How are we gonna do this? Now, the first issue is just the sheer scope of this project. So 64 potentiometers is a lot. So if you've ever tried to breadboard with potentiometers, you know it's always a little touchy. You can kind of get potentiometers to fit in the breadboard, but it's never perfect. And then when you move them, like they lose contact and you get weird glitches and you don't know whether your code is messing up or the potentiometers are loose. So it's, it's really hard to troubleshoot. And also you got to think each potentiometer requires three wires and we're going to have 64 potentiometers. So that's what, 192 wires just to hook up the potentiometers. I'm not even going to try to breadboard this. So what we're going to do is we're going to design a custom circuit board and do this properly. So here we are in KiCad and this is my design for this circuit. So I called it the lots of pots because there's lots of pots in this project. And here is the schematic. Now the first question you may have is, doesn't the Arduino Nano only have six analog inputs? How are we gonna connect 64 pots to six inputs? Well, we're going to use a very cool chip called a multiplexer. And here they are here, these yellow boxes. And you can see each multiplexer will handle 16 pots. So to get all 64, I need four multiplexers. I have a detailed video on multiplexers. So if you wanna learn more, you can watch that, but I'll give you the overview. So here's our multiplexer chip. We're using the 74HC4067. Now a multiplexer is a chip with multiple inputs and one output. The output is labeled COM and here are all my inputs and we have 16 in total on this chip. So the basic concept with multiplexers is we have four selector pins and here they are right here. And we're gonna hook those to digital inputs on the Arduino. Now by sending different combinations of logic signals to these four pins, I can select which of these inputs will be connected to this output. So if I make them all zero, then this first input will be connected to the output. And if I make one of them a one, then the next input and so on. So our program is basically gonna change these pins to cycle through all of these inputs. And then all we have to do is read the output and we'll be able to read all 16 potentiometers with one Arduino input. To make this chip work, we need to add power. So I'm adding five volts from the Arduino power supply. I'm also connecting it to ground. We also have this enable pin, which is very important. So if I tie this enable pin to ground, it's going to enable the chip. If I tie it to five volts, it will disable the chip. So all these pins will be broken out to little connectors on the edge of the board. And if I jump these two pins together, I will enable the chip. And if I jump the other two pins together, I will disable the pin. I could also control the enable uh, directly if I connect it to an Arduino digital output. Now, if you notice here, this will be four pins on the edge of my board and all the multiplexers selector pins will be tied to these same four pins. So that way I only need four pins on my Arduino to control all of these multiplexers. If you notice with this bank, I've also included some direct outputs connected to the wiper of each potentiometer in case I wanna use them without the multiplexer. Finally, we're gonna add power and ground and that's the entire circuit. So here is the board I came up with. Notice I have grouped the pots into groups of 16 with the multiplexer right next to it. 
and all the inputs and outputs I've tried to keep to the upper edge of the board. And if we go to the 3D view, we can see the board in all its glory. And through the magic of video editing, boom, the board is done and soldered. Here are all the potentiometers, the multiplexers, and the pins on the top with the little header jumpers to enable and disable the multiplexers. Now there is one major flaw with this board and uh, I don't know if you can see it, but these potentiometers are not designed to have a knob on top. They are actually knurled and they have a, a pointer molded in. But if you notice, the pointers are all pointed down, which uh, is not good. They should be pointed up. The reason that happened is I used a similar model to this and it was designed to have a knob. And when I put the knob on, the knob pointed this way. So I assumed that these guys would be the same, so I oriented them in this way. But apparently they are not. They are the opposite. Luckily for us, this won't affect the way the circuit works in any way. It's just kind of a little annoyance. Also notice I've got some uh, standoffs here, so when I put it on the bench, it's not going to short circuit. So here's one more thing about this board. I chose 100K potentiometers for this project. Now, if you read most Arduino sites, they will suggest you use 10K potentiometers. Why did I go with 100K? To answer that question, we have to talk about parallel resistances and how much current that this project will draw. Now, if you take a look at our schematic, notice that each potentiometer has one side connected to five volts and the other side connected to ground and then we have our wiper going to our multiplexer pins. Now, if we just forget about the, the wiper pin for a second, basically what we have is a bunch of 100K resistors between five volts and ground. So if I draw that out, we basically have our plus five volts in our ground, and then we have all our potentiometers connected in parallel, all 64 of them. So if you're brand new to electronics, you may not know the difference between resistors in series and resistors in parallel. So let's do a quick demonstration. So here we see two resistors in series, and we know they're in series because one follows the other and current has to go through both resistors. Now these two resistors are in parallel because the current could either go through this one or it could go through this one. So there's two branches for the current to flow in. Now, if we picture our circuit to be a highway, and here's a nice two-lane highway, cars are zipping along as fast as they can go. Now, all of a sudden, a car comes along, oh, it's out of control, going too fast, it crashes, boom, there we go. Now, you know what's gonna happen. We're blocking one of the lanes, so it's going to be harder for traffic to flow, and we're gonna get a huge traffic backup, and you're gonna be late for work. So this accident scene is resisting the flow of traffic. And if we added another accident in series, say a truck comes along and it flips over and it's filled with chickens and the chickens are running all over the highway, well, it's gonna make it even harder. So the more accidents you add in series, the more resistance to traffic flow there will be. Now, what happens if we add a resistor in parallel? Well, what we're basically doing is we're adding a new path for traffic to flow. And that's like adding a new lane to our highway. And you can see, as I add this new lane, it opens up the highway, more space for traffic to flow, the traffic will go faster. So the basic concept is resistors in series add more resistance to the circuit, whereas resistors in parallel decrease the resistance in the circuit. So as you can see, all of our 64 resistors will be in parallel, which will decrease the overall resistance. So let's try to figure out how much current all these potentiometers will draw. So to figure out the current draw of our circuit, we're going to use Ohm's law. So the formula for current draw, which is I, it will equal the voltage divided by the resistance. So we know the voltage already, it's five volts, but we need to figure out what the resistance of all these potentiometers in parallel is. Now, if our resistors were in series, let's say they were 10K ohms each, 
it will be very simple. All you have to do is add them together. So 10K plus 10K would give me equivalent of 20K. So for parallel resistors, it's not that simple. So how do we figure out the total of all these guys? Series resistors is just R1 plus R2 and so on equals R total. For parallel resistors, we're not going to add the resistance. We're going to add the opposite of resistance. We're going to add something called the conductance. So to turn a resistance into a conductance, all we have to do is take the inverse. So we put it under one. So to add up our conductances, we'll just take our resistance value, take the inverse, and then we'll add the next resistor and so on. And that will give us our conductance. So it's kind of confusing to describe. So let me just do it and you'll see how easy it is. All right. So let's take our handy Microsoft Windows standard calculator and let's figure out our total resistance. So like I said, I have 64 100K resistors in parallel. So let's take 100K, which is 100,000 ohms. First, we need to figure out the conductance value of this. And all we have to do is hit this one over X button and that will take the inverse of that number. And there is our conductance value. Now we could add that number 64 times and get our total, but since it's all the same resistors, let's just multiply it. So I'll take my conductance and I'll multiply it by 64. And that is our total conductance of the circuit. Now, once again, I need to find out the resistance. So how do I turn that conductance back into resistance? Well, I just invert it again by hitting one over X. And there you go. There is the total resistance of 64 100K resistors in parallel, 1,562.5 ohms, or you could think of it as 1.5 kilo ohms. So now that we know our total resistance, we can do our ohms law. And like I said, current equals voltage divided by resistance. So let's put that into memory. Now, if we take our five volts and we divide it by our total resistance, that is our current draw, so 0.0032 amps, or you could think of it as 3.2 milliamps. Now, why is that important? If you think about it, if I use 10K pots for this project, that would be 10 times higher current draw. So instead, we would get 32 milliamps of current draw. So one thing to keep in mind is that the Arduino Nano's power supply can only put out 200 milliamps at maximum. So 32 milliamps is quite a big chunk of that total. So if we can get it down to 3.2 milliamps, that's much better. And that is why I went with the 100K pots for this project. All right, everyone, we have done the science, we have done the engineering, we have done the hard work to get to this point, and now it's time to put it to the test to find out if this project is gonna work or not. Can you feel the excitement? I sure can. All right, the first step is we gotta get the code ready and put it on the microcontroller. So let's do that. So this MIDI controller program is something I made many years ago. And it's just kind of a configurable program that allows you to easily, you know, make up uh, combinations of buttons and potentiometers and make your own MIDI controller. So the first thing to run this program, you got to make sure you got three tabs at the top and you have to make sure you have the Arduino MIDI library installed. And if you don't have it, you just need to go to manage libraries. And you want to scroll down until you find MIDI library by Francois Bess and make sure you just have it installed. Okay, so once you got all your libraries installed, we can configure the program. So the way this works is you just have to fill in some parameters. So first of all, we have to tell uh, the program how many controls we have connected. 
Um, so we have a few categories. We have buttons, pots, and then uh, multiplexer buttons and multiplexer pots. So the normal buttons are, and pots are pots that are, are wired directly to your Arduino. And the multiplexer pots and buttons are ones that are going through a multiplexer chip. So we have no direct buttons, no direct pots, no multiplexer buttons, and we have 64 multiplexer pots, so make sure we change this to 64. Next, we have to indicate how many multiplexers we have and give a bit of information about them. To define a multiplexer, we just type the command mux, and then we give it a name. So I'm just calling them M1, M2, M3, M4. Very creative. Next, we have to tell the program what Arduino pin our MUX is connected to. So uh, these are analog, so I'm connecting them to analog pins. So M1 is connected to Arduino pin A0, and then A1, A2, A3. Next, we tell the program how many pins our multiplexers have, because you can get 8-pin versions and 16-pin versions. So these are all 16-pin versions, so I just put 16 for all of them. Finally, we have to tell the program, are we using our multiplexer as an analog or digital device? If it's analog, we put true. If we put false here, it would be treated as a button or digital device. So we'll just put true for all of these, and there's our four multiplexer chips. Next, we'll go down to this section where we define our potentiometers connected to a multiplexer. So we'll use the command pot. We'll give each potentiometer its own name, so I'm just using MP1, MP2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up. Next, we have to tell it which multiplexer, the ones we defined earlier, that pot is connected to. So these are the M1s, these are the M2s, M3s, and M4s. Next, we have this uh, command number, and that's really not used for anything right now, so we'll just put zero for all of them. Next, we will put the MIDI CC number that the pot will send and all these pots will be treated as MIDI CC. So this could be any number from 0 to 127. Uh, what I did to make it easy to troubleshoot is I just made the CC number the exact same as the pot number. So if one of them isn't working, I'll know exactly which pot on the board is the culprit. So you can see we've got one all the way up to 64. And the last parameter is the MIDI channel, and I'm just putting them all onto channel one. The final thing we have to do is we have to update this array with all the pots we just defined. So to do that, you put the ampersand symbol and then the pot name that we defined here, and then you put a comma, and then you do the next one. So you can see I've got a big group here, uh, MP0 all the way to MP... 064 and uh, that's it we should be ready to go so here is my uh, Arduino Nano on the breadboard and I'm gonna plug it into my computer and we should get the little USB beep so I have to choose from my board menu the Arduino Nano right there next I want to make sure a port comes up so this is a port that the Arduino software is detected an Arduino on so it should show up here it's com3 in my case yours could be different one thing i sometimes have to do depending on the uh, arduino nano whether it's an, a genuine arduino or a knockoff you may have to use this parameter so normally we we choose uh, at mega 328p but if it you get errors and it doesn't compile for some reason you can try uh, old bootloader version and that will usually work all right, everything's programmed. We just got to get this program into the board. Wish me luck. So go up to your little upload arrow and watch for the flashing lights on the board. And you can watch the program go up. And there you go. When you get the done uploading message, you're good to go. Okay, our Arduino Nano is programmed up and ready to go. Our board is sitting here looking real nice. Now we gotta introduce them to each other. So the first thing we have to do is we're gonna build a five pin MIDI circuit. So the Arduino Nano doesn't support USB MIDI. So we're gonna have to use old school five pin MIDI, which is not a problem. 
it, it brings me back to the good old days. So I'm gonna use one of these jacks with the pins on the bottom and I like these because they actually fit into a breadboard so they're very good to experiment with. If you look at the back of the jack you'll see there's five pins. The pins we're concerned with is the middle pin so we're going to connect this one to ground. The pin directly to the right of it we're going to connect this through a 220 ohm resistor to our Arduino's TX pin. The pin directly to the left of the middle, it, we're going to connect through a 220 ohm resistor to the Arduino's 5 volt power supply. And the two outside pins, we're not going to connect to anything. So first of all, I'll take my MIDI jack and I'll put it right on the edge of the board here. Now we'll take a jumper wire from the middle pin of my MIDI jack to the ground pin on my Arduino, labeled GND. Now I'll grab two 220 ohm resistors and I'll put one on my right hand pin, just kind of bridge the middle of the board here. And I'll put the other on my left hand pin. And remember the two outside pins are not connected to anything. Now I'll take a jumper wire and I'll connect this right hand pin to the pin marked TX on the Arduino and that is the transmit pin. Next I'll take another piece of wire and I'll take this left hand pin and I'll put it to the 5 volt supply on the Nano, it's labeled 5V. And there you go, our MIDI circuit is done. All right, now we need to hook our Lotso POTS board up to the circuit. So first I'll grab two jumper wires. Now you notice these ones have a male end on one side and a female end on the other. And that's going to help us deal with these header pins. So I'll take the uh, power jack marked plus and I'll put that to the 5 volt supply pin 5V on the Arduino. And I'll take the power pin marked minus and that will go to our ground, GND. So now our entire board has power. Next, I wanna make sure I enable all my multiplexers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these little jumpers for the headers and you notice I've marked it on and off, so I'm going to put it across the two pins labeled on. All right, and I've done all four multiplexers, so they should all be enabled now. Next, we'll connect our address pins. So remember, every multiplexer has four pins that tell it which pot to send to the output. And we've routed them all to the same four pins. So these four pins control all the multiplexers. So the way this code works, you uh, have to use uh, digital pins D2, D3, D4, and D5 for this. So we take our lowest digit, the S0 pin on our address, and we're gonna put that to Arduino uh, digital pin two. We'll take the next pin and we'll put it to digital pin D3. Uh, the next pin will go to D4, and the last pin will go to D5. And the last step, we have to connect the output pins of our multiplexers to the analog inputs on the Arduino. So if you remember back to the program, the first multiplexer was connected to A0. The second multiplexer is A1. This third guy is going to A2. And finally, the fourth multiplexer is going to A3. And there you go, we should be ready to give this thing a test. So in order to get the five pin MIDI into my computer, I'm gonna use this uh, MIDI man, little two port MIDI interface. I will connect a MIDI cable to the input and the other end to the output of my project. Finally, we'll power up our project with a USB cable and watch for smoke. All right, so far so good. Okay, so to test this, we're going to use this uh, MIDI monitoring software called MIDI Aux, 
and that is going to read the data that comes into this. And if everything works okay, we should get some CC messages on the display. Oh, will you look at that. So that looks great. We've got signal and data is coming through. Now we just got to test every potentiometer one at a time and make sure they all work. So when you're looking at these numbers, I want you to pay attention to the data one column, and that is gonna be the pot number and the MIDI CC number that is coming out of our project. So let's just go through, turn every pot, and make sure they all work. There you go, 64 pots, one Arduino Nano. They said it couldn't be done, we just proved them wrong. So there you go guys, 64 pots, one Arduino Nano. It is possible, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And there's two extra analog inputs that we didn't even touch, so maybe another 32 pots are possible. As always, I'd like to sincerely thank my patrons on Patreon for supporting me and helping me build weird stuff like this. Thanks again, guys. Let's enjoy your names on the big screen, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>